In this video, we're going to take a look at an introduction to the discriminant. So let's just start with a general quadratic equation that's equal to zero. So let's say we've got ax squared plus bx plus c, and this is equal to zero. Okay. Now hopefully you're aware that the solution to this quadratic equation would be given by the quadratic formula. So x is equal to minus b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. Okay, so hopefully you're aware of this. Now this part underneath the square root is important, and this is what we call the discriminant. So b squared minus 4ac. Okay, this is the discriminant. So this is the discriminant. And in terms of notation, we can use the Greek letter delta to represent this. So the discriminant delta is equal to b squared minus 4ac. Okay, and the reason this is important is because for a quadratic equation, and that's equal to zero in this case here, this tells us how many roots we would have for this quadratic equation. So we have three cases here. So if b squared minus 4ac is greater than zero, then what we say here is we have two distinct real roots. So let's just write this down here. So two distinct real roots. So in that case, if we were to draw a quick sketch of something like this here, um, that's not neat at all. Let's try again. So what we'd have here in this case is something that would look something like this. Okay, my axes are pretty, um, pretty rough, but just so you can get the idea. We'd have a quadratic which would cut through the x-axis twice. So it has two distinct real roots, say something like that. So I've got a root here and I've got a root here. Okay, so we have two distinct real roots. We have the case where b squared minus 4ac is equal to zero. Now in this case, what we say is we have one repeated real root. So one repeated real root. Or you might see equal real root. So one repeated real root. Now, in this case, we'd have a quadratic that is something of the form, say, um, well, once we factorize it and set it equal to zero, we'd have, say, x plus one all squared is equal to zero. Okay. In that case, we'd have one root here, and that would be x equals minus one. Okay. And in that case, it's going to look something like this. So if we just quickly sketch it. Where again, this is our y axis, this is our x axis. Not that here, then it's going to look, say, something like this. So my sketch won't be perfect, but it just touches here. We've got that real root, one repeated real root there, okay, at that point there. Okay, say that would be x equals minus 1, for example, okay. And then we've got the final case. So let's just clear a bit of room here just so we can finish this off. Let's just clear this off here. Let's off just so we don't cause any confusion. So you might have guessed it by now. And our final case here is when b squared minus 4ac is less than zero. Okay. Now in this case, what we'd say here is we have no real roots. So no real roots. So graphically, what that would look like is say something like this. This is just a, an example. Obviously, there's quite a few different ways you could show this. But it will look something like this. Okay, so in other words, it doesn't cut through the x-axis. Okay, so we say no real roots in this case. Now, if you go on to do A-level further maths, you will come across um, this again. And in that case, we introduce a number system that does allow for solutions in this case. Okay, so that, was, that would be when you take a look at complex numbers. So you take a look at that early on in your first year of A-level further maths, okay? But for A-level maths, you don't need to worry about this case. All that would happen is the square root um, would be a negative number. Obviously, if b squared minus 4ac is less than zero, then you're attempting to take the square root of a negative number. So that's the idea there. So clearly, we can't find any real roots for that, okay? So that's our introduction to the discriminant. Let's take a look now at some introductory questions on the discriminant. So we've got three questions here that we're going to work through together. 
And then on the next page, there's three practice questions for you to have a go at. So for these questions here, the first two, we're just asked to evaluate the discriminant of these quadratics. So let's start with this one here. So the quadratic here is x squared plus x minus 4. So let's just note the formula for the discriminant. So delta here is equal to b squared minus 4ac. Now it's up to you whether you note the values of a, b and c. It is a good step to do when you're kind of learning this as a topic, just to kind of get into the flow of it. So for this quadratic here, a is equal to the coefficient of x squared, so that will be 1. b is the coefficient of x here, which again is 1. And then in this case, c is equal to minus 4. So if we evaluate the discriminant for this quadratic, delta is equal, or the discriminant here is equal to b squared, so that's 1, minus 4 lots of ac. So in fact, let's do it all in one bracket. Looks a bit neater like that. So let's evaluate 4 times a, which is 1, times c, which is minus 4. So 4 times 1 times minus 4. So in that case, what we're going to get here is 1 minus, so this will be 4 times 1, which is 4, times that by minus 4. So I'm going to get minus 16, then minus minus 16. So in that case, I'm going to get 1 plus 16, giving me 17 there for the discriminant. Okay, so in that case, you'd have two real roots. Okay, so that you can see, actually calculating the discriminant isn't too challenging. Okay, so let's take a look at this example now. So the discriminant here of 4x squared minus x plus 10. So again, what I'm going to do just to start here is just write the values of a, which in this case, the coefficient of x squared is 4, b, the coefficient of x here is minus 1, so obviously just be careful with your signs. And then for c, this is equal to 10. So again here, all I'm going to do is just note the formula. So that's b squared minus 4ac. So b squared minus 4ac. Now I'm going to substitute my values in here to work out the discriminant. So b squared, so that's going to be minus 1 squared, giving me 1. Minus, again let's do this all in one bracket. So 4 times a, which is 4 times that by 4, and then times that by c, which is 10. So 4 times 4 times it by 10. So what we're going to get here, well, we're going to get 1 minus, so 4 times 4 is 16, times it by 10, 160. So we do 1 minus 160, giving me minus 159 there. So in that case, what we'd say is we have no real roots for this quadratic equation. And this final example here, it says determine whether the equation y equals 3x squared plus 6x plus 3 has two distinct real roots, one repeated real root, or no real roots. So this last example here is just evaluating whether you understand how the discriminant works. So to start with, let's calculate the discriminant of this equation here. So delta, our discriminant is equal to b squared minus 4ac. We now just write in the values of a, b, and c to start with here. So a is equal to 3, that's the coefficient of x squared. b is the coefficient of the x here, so b is 6, and c is equal to 3. So we just substitute these values in appropriately here. So b squared, so that's going to be 6 squared, is 36. We know minus 4 times a, which is 3. So 4 times 3, and then we times it by c, so times it by 3 again. So here, I'm going to get 36 minus 4 times 3 is 12, times that by 3 is 36. So we get 36 minus 36, which is clearly 0. So the discriminant here is equal to 0. So now we have to decide, based on the value of the discriminant, whether this has two distinct real roots, one repeated real root, or no real roots. And in this case, we would say there is one repeated real root, because the discriminant is equal to zero. So therefore, we have one repeated, one repeated real root there. Okay. And there we have it. So again, that's because the discriminant is equal to zero. So let me just double check my working before we move on. So four times three, so that's four times eight, yeah, times it by C, three again, perfect, good stuff. So like I said, that's what we should have got for those examples there. So now it's your turn to have a go at a couple of practice questions. So like always, pause the video now, have a quick go, and then we'll take a look in a moment at what you should have got. So hopefully you got on okay with these practice questions. Let's take a look now at what you should have got. 
So for the first one here, again, we're just simply evaluating the discriminant of this quadratic. So let's just note the value of a. So a in this case is the coefficient of x squared. So just be careful here, this is minus one, so minus one. For b here, the coefficient of x, that would be four. And c here will simply be one. So just noting the formula for the discriminant, that's b squared minus four ac. So b in this case is four, so we do four squared, which is 16, minus, so now we do four, times that by a, which is minus one, and then we times it by c, which is one. So simplifying this here, we're gonna get 16 minus, so four times minus one is minus four, times that by one, we get minus four. So we get 16 minus minus four, which would give me 16 plus four, which is 20. Okay, so the discriminant of minus x squared plus four x plus one is equal to 20. We take a look at this one now. So we've got two x squared minus three x plus five. Again, let's just note the formula for the discriminant. So that's b squared minus four ac. So if we also just note the value of a, b, and c, again, you don't have to do this, but I think if you're just starting off with this topic, I think it's a good like little habit to get into. So a in this case is two, b is minus three, and c will be five. So what we're gonna get here, well, b squared would be minus three squared, so that would be nine minus, so we're gonna do four times by a, which is two, times that by five, so what do I get here? I'm gonna get nine minus four times two is eight, times up by five, I get 40. So nine minus 40, and that will give us minus 31 there, okay? So like you can see again, rather straightforward, it is just a matter of simply substituting that. The appropriate values in is just obviously being able to identify correctly the correct values, okay? So the discriminant of two x squared minus three x plus five is minus 31. And then in this case here, again, we're asked to determine whether this equation, y equals x squared plus 4x plus 2, has two distinct real roots, one repeated real root, or no real roots. So in that case, we need to evaluate the discriminant. So let's just identify the values of a, b, and c here. So a is equal to 1, b is equal to 4, and c is equal to 2. So we've got the values of a, b, and c here. Now we need to use our formula, so b squared minus 4ac. So substituting the appropriate values in as we go here, b squared, that will be 4 squared, so 16, minus, so it's going to be 4, times by a, which is 1, times by c, which is 2. So in that case, just simplifying here, we get 16 minus, 4 times 1 is 4, times that by 2, we get 8. So 16 minus 8, and that will simplify to give us a there. So the discriminant of this quadratic equation here is equal to a. So in that case, we now need to determine whether we have two distinct real roots, one repeated real root, or no real roots. And in that case, because the discriminant is um, greater than zero, what we say here then, so therefore, the discriminant is greater than zero, so what we say is we have two distinct real roots okay and there we have it so hopefully you didn't find this too challenging so that brings us to the end of this video in the next video we're going to take a look at some more challenging questions based on the discriminant thanks for watching